Well, um, welcome everyone to this session, this online training session organized by Glossolan, the Global Soil Laboratory Network. I will have a short introduction uh, to this webinar and then the, um, the proper training session will start. So let me uh, share my screen. I will um, briefly introduce you to the um, today's session. I hope you can uh, see my screen. Just a second, I lose. Yeah, I hope you can see my screen. Um, so. Uh, this is the, today we have an online training session on the standard operating procedure for uh, soil available phosphorus using uh, Olsen method. Um, my name is Filippo Benedetti and I work at the Global Soil Partnership of FAO, uh, coordinating uh, supporting the coordination of the Global Soil Laboratory Network. It is called GLOSOLAN. For those of you who are not aware um, of this network, this is a global network grouping together soil laboratories worldwide uh, that is structured in different regions. So we have within the global network, several regional networks uh, also called resonance and these cover um, different regions. So we have a network for Asia that is called SILNET, a regional network for Near East and North Africa soil laboratories that is called NINALAB. Then we have AFRILAB for African laboratories, Eurozolan, which is grouping together laboratories coming from Europe and Eurasia. Then we have ASPAC for laboratories from the Pacific region. And then we have LATSOLAN, the regional soil laboratory network for Latin America and uh, the Caribbean. Uh, we are also uh, working uh, with countries to establish national soil laboratory networks to group together all uh, soil laboratories operating within the same country. And as you can see, uh, the network increased a lot in the last years. And now uh, we currently we are currently approaching 800 members. So uh, if you are not yet members of the network, please uh, visit our website. And um, I strongly encourage you to register to the network uh, because you will have uh, the chance to join several activities, such the one of today, that is the on capacity development. Then there is also session. Uh, uh, on other topics, then we have activities like internal and external quality control, harmonization of standard operating procedures. And as you can see here, this is a, a screenshot of our website where you can see all the different topics that uh, Glossolan is taking care of. So we take care of course of sonalities. So again, internal and external quality control, standard operating procedures. And we try also to um, organize several capacity development sessions so webinars on wet chemistry, like the one of today, then dry chemistry as well. So uh, webinars on soil spectroscopy, webinars on health and safety, and uh, some webinars on um, quality assurance and quality control will be organized soon. We also take care of fertilizer analysis um, via the um, infa uh, network. Glossone is also working on equipment. So we support laboratories with uh, food chasing and uh, maintenance of the uh, equipment. And we are also uh, working on soil spectroscopy. And uh, we have an initiative on soil spectroscopy. Uh, on our webpage on capacity development looks like this. So each webinar, you have the link to register and an overview of the training. So um, who is gonna give the training? So the a short biography of the trainers. So you can see the, um, the background and the short abstract of the training. So you can have a look uh, to, the, um, to the webinar uh, topic, let's say. And after the implementation of the webinar, we upload online all the material. So even after today's webinar, you will be able to uh, see again this webinar because we are currently video recording it and we will upload the video recording online. So after the webinar, you will be able to just click on the recordings and you will link to um, a YouTube link where you can uh, rewatch this webinar if you feel like to go through it again. And you can also consult the presentation that will be displayed today. Uh, this is an overview of all the training sessions uh, organized by Glossman from September uh, up to December of this year. Uh, as you can see, we on the right part of the screen, we implement also several uh, webinars on uh, soil spectroscopy uh, and a new series of webinars on soil spectroscopy um, will be organized in the beginning of 2022. 
So I will invite you to have a look on our website to, to get all the information about that. While on the left side of the screen, you can see all the webinars that, are, uh, that have been in, organized regarding um, wet chemistry. So we have some for Olsen, like uh, that was implemented in Spanish in October. Then um, one webinar was on health and safety in laboratories. Then we had uh, a couple of webinars on saturated soil paste extract, both in English and Arabic languages. Then um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had one webinar on World Clean Back Method for Measuring Soil Organic Carbon. And today's webinar is on Soil Available Phosphorus by Olsen. Still, I would like to um, present you, to invite you to register to the upcoming webinars um, that will be on, the next ones are on handling and preparation of soil samples for chemical and physical analysis. So basically sample pretreatment. And this will be implemented both in English and in French. So 6 and 7 December. On our website, you can find the link to register. So please have a look at them. Um, after, uh, we will have a webinar on soil electrical conductivity. It will be held on 14 of December. And a webinar on internal quality control in soil laboratories is currently under organization and will be um, implemented on 15 December. The timing is uh, still has to be confirmed, but we will upload all the information soon on our website. Today's training session is about um, soil available phosphorus using goods and method, and will follow the procedures, the SOP that um, was harmonized by Glossolan in um, last year. So basically, if you go on our website, you can download this document, it's a PDF file, uh, that, that guide you through all the steps of the procedures. So for sample preparation to quality assurance and quality control, health and safety measurement, all the steps of the calculations. And so I invite you to download this file. Uh, the link is here. So you go on a different website, you click on, you see on the right, this is a screenshot. You go soil analysis, then standard operating procedures. And then you can look for those on phosphorus and check the one on you click here on also method you can download the uh, the, the sop um, so basically the webinar of today will cover uh, all the aspects of this sop uh, again this webinar was given already um, in october by in spanish was at the spanish that session it was organized by by, by some colleagues from mexico and today, some colleagues from the Philippines are giving this more or less the same webinar in English this time. And um, so I would really like to uh, thank once again the colleagues from Mexico and that held the uh, webinar last time and the colleagues from the Philippines for the kind of availability to support Glossolan in this activity and to implement this training. So uh, today we have with us uh, Dr. Gina Nilo that is the assistant director of the BSWM, that is the Bureau of Soil and Water Management in the Philippines. Then we have um, Mrs. Florfina Sanchez, uh, Mr. Belgi Bernardo, and Mrs. Lira Espectacion, from, uh, still from the Bureau, so the Bureau of Soil and Water Management. Uh, so without any further ado, I will uh, now give the floor to them. Uh, basically, let me just give you a short um, overview on how the webinar will be structured. So after this short presentation, uh, the trainers will give the presentation of the procedures. Um, and after that, you will have time to um, take the floor, interact directly with the speakers, raise questions to them, uh, bring to their attention some issues you're facing in your laboratory about these procedures. You can share your um, experience and your questions. You can also write uh, such question in the chat. We will try to answer them in the chat or um, answer them after in the questions and answer uh, session after the presentation. Um, so um, now we give the floor. I don't know who, who, each colleague from the Philippines will share the presentation. I don't know if Berhil or someone else. Well, Dr. Gina, maybe you are there. You want to make a short introduction to your yes, colleagues. Thank you. So, let me introduce you, Dr. Gina, uh, the director of the BSWM. Thanks you once again, Dr. Gina, for your availability to you and your team. Really, yes. um, we really appreciate your support and your kindness availability to give this training and to share your knowledge with all the other Glossola members. So, uh, Gina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sir Filippo. 
Greetings everyone from the Laboratory Services Division of the Bureau of Soils and Water Management. Indeed, it is with great pleasure for our blessed and strong women and men. That's the meaning of BSWM. It is our great pleasure as the National Reference Laboratory of the Food and Agriculture Organization to take the lead in this training for the available phosphorus using Olsen method. And for this evening, I am pleased to introduce our team. And with me is Miss Florfina Sanchez. She will handle, Miss Flor, come on, please show yourself in the video. Yes. So Ms. Plofina Sanchez is the chief of the soil chemistry section of our laboratory. And also she will discuss on this introduction and scope of application of the analysis using available phosphorus using Olsen method. Also for this uh, evening in the Philippines, it may be morning, afternoon to you. Um, we have Mr. Berhil Bernaldo, my co-author for this uh, uh, method. He will discuss on the principle and factors affecting the analysis. And of course, our very able analyst, Ms. Lyra Spectacion. She will do the presentation for the step-by-step -step procedure of the Olsen T method. So indeed, we are happy to be with you this evening and much more so, we are happy to receive your comments and questions at the end of the session. So let us all enjoy this very important session. And we hope that through this training, we can contribute to our one mission at Glossolan, that if we cannot measure it, we cannot manage it. And this is our intention. Olsen P is one of the standard test methods that we promote because we want that all our data will be interchangeable and exchangeable. So all of you, welcome to this training and God bless us all. Thank you. So Berhil, you will, uh, Miss Floor, the floor is yours for the introduction and scope of application of this analysis. Thank you, Floor. Sorry, uh, it seems that you are muted. Can you unmute? Muted, Kayata, Floor. Or Ah, Mayna, would you like to? Good morning. Okay. Yeah, the sound is not very clear. No, not not very well. At least me. I don't. I don't know that the other colleagues. Is it okay with your floor if you move here? Okay, uh, good morning. Yeah, thanks. Can much you better. hear me now? Yeah, yeah, much better. Thanks. Uh, can, you... can you hear me now, sir, Filippo? Yeah, much better now. Thanks. How about the presentation? Can you receive it now? Yeah, Florfina, we can hear you. Is it okay, sir? Yeah, yeah, you can proceed. Okay. 
sabiju. Gandang sabiju. Thank you po. Kaya, baka nandiyan na po rin ngayon na mabakay asawa ni Fred. <laughs> okay, once again, good, e uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. So we are going to discuss the standard operating procedure for available phosphorus using the Olsen method. Uh, for the introduction, phosphorus in soil. Uh, phosphorus in soil is essential to all forms of life on this planet. It is an important nutrient necessary for growth and development of plants and animals wherein our food supply depends. Soil phosphorus is, um, is found in two forms, namely the organic P and the inorganic P. These two forms together make up the total soil phosphorus. Organic forms of phosphorus include dead plant or animal residues and soil microorganisms. Soil microorganisms play a key role in processing and transforming the organic phosphorus into plant available forms. The inorganic phosphorus forms can be classified to exist in three different pools. The first one is the plant available phosphorus. This pool is comprised of inorganic phosphorus dissolved in soil water solution that is readily available for plant uptake. The second pool is sorbed phosphorus. The phosphorus pool, this phosphorus pool is comprised of inorganic phosphorus attached to clay surfaces, iron, aluminum, and calcium oxides in soil. This is released slowly for plant uptake. The third pool is the mineral phosphorus. This phosphorus pool is comprised of primary and secondary phosphate minerals present in soil. An example of primary phosphorus minerals include apatite, stendite, and baricite. Uh, while the secondary phosphorus minerals include calcium, iron, and aluminum phosphates. But the release of this phosphorus from this pool is extremely slow and occurs when the mineral weathers and dissolves in soil water. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the effect of pH, pH and the distribution of orthophosphates in solution. So phosphorus in solution may exist both as orthophosphates or uh, higher polymers. Phosphorus in soil solution, however, will be almost exclusively as orthophosphates. The individual uh, species of orthophosphates that will be in solution vary with pH as shown in this figure. We have the uh, orthophosphates, the dihydrogen phosphate, the hydrogen phosphate, and the phosphates. This species uh, in most agricultural soils, the pH will be between 4 and 9. Hence, the ion species present will be dihydrogen phosphate and hydrogen phosphate. The ion species present is somewhat relevant to plant uptake of phosphorus since it has been shown that plants prefer the monovalent ions. From this figure, the concentration of phosphorus found in soil solution may range from less than 0 0.1 to 7 or 8 milligram per liter or ppm, depending on soil pH and the recent addition of uh, fertilizer phosphorus and other soil factors. The maximum level of phosphorus in soil solution will be at a pH between 6.5 and 8. Now we go to the brief history of uh, phosphorus extraction methods for um, uh, from the soil. Soil testing for phosphorus has been formally conducted in the United States since the late 1940s and is now a well-established agronomic practice. Uh, the fundamental goal of soil pea testing is to identify the optimum pea concentration required for plant growth and to define the inorganic or 
organic fertilization needs and the economic return and investment in phosphate fertilizer. Next slide, please. These are the list of soil test fee methods most commonly used today. Methods for determining soil fee, its various forms and availability to plants have been essential in developing principles and knowledge of the nature and behavior of phosphorus in soils. The purpose of these methods is to characterize the P in the soil, uh, in the soil system. Many methods exist, but they vary in principle and technical details. Uh, continuation of the next slide, please. Uh, the Olsen P method uh, was developed by Sterling R. Olsen and co workers in 1954 to predict crop response to fertilizer P inputs on calcareous soils using the 0.5 molar sodium bicarbonate as extracting solution adjusted at a pH 8.5. <clears throat> Next slide. Next slide. Uh, Higher coloration between the phosphorus extracted in the laboratory by the method and that absorbed by these crops. And the suggested scale for suggested scale for interpretations is the uh, if it is less than 5 ppm, the response was expected. Between 5 and 10 ppm, the response was probable. And uh, less than 10 ppm response was unlikely. So values were collaborated by other researchers from similar soils and crops and had been erroneously extrapolated for other crops without taking into account the root density of the crops. <coughs> Next slide, uh, Usually this method was used, uh, is used in the North Central and Western United States. And this is the reference uh, used by the uh, researchers using this Olsen and Sommer, um, using this, uh, the authorship of Olsen and Summers. So next slide, please. In soil analysis, uh, we distinguish two types. Uh, the first one is the total analysis and the fractional analysis. The Olsen P uh, method corresponds to the fractional type wherein the fractions of this element present in the soil must be related to the response of plants to the application of phosphate fertilizer. There are numerous methods for extracting P fractions with different sets of generated values. However, these only have meaning when they are associated with the response of the plants. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> this correlation uh, in this figure shows the correlation between the extractable phosphorus and the percent of maximum yield of soybean for soybeans, corn, and wheat. The intersections of the dotted and uh, dotted and solid lines indicate the critical point where further uh, fertilizer additions will not economically increase yields. Next slide, please. Uh, the scope of application. The method, P me uh, this Olsen P method is best suited for calcareous soils, particularly with those uh, greater than 2% calcium carbonate, but it has been shown in some research to be reasonably uh, effective for moderately acidic soils, according to the fiction and rogue uh, in the year 1990. In the Olsen method, phosphorus is extracted using 0 0.5 sodium bicarbonate solution adjusted at a pH of uh, 8.5. As shown, uh, the calcium phosphates will react to the sodium bicarbonate at the pH 8.5 to, pro uh, to produce a precipitate of calcium carbonate and the uh, phosphate ions that we are determining. <clears throat> this method is based on the use of bicarbonates, carbonates, and hydroxyl ions to decrease the solution concentrations of soluble calcium ions by precipitation as calcium carbonate. 
carbonate and soluble aluminum ions and ferric, uh, ferrous, uh, iron ions by formation of aluminum and ferric oxyhydroxides, which in, uh, thus increasing the solubility of phosphorus. The increased surface negative charges and or decreased number of sorption sites on iron and aluminum oxide surfaces at higher pH levels also enhance the sorption of available phosphorus into solution. <coughs> As discussed by the uh, they been uh, during 1980 and other authors, different methods give variable results according to the type and concentration of the extractant, the soil solution ratio, uh, time of shaking, and temperature. Uh, results obtained with different P methods are seldom comparable. So this table shows the soil properties to consider when selecting a method to determine the phosphorus and recommended methods according to El Rashidi uh, in the year 2010. So results obtained, uh, therefore analysis of P in soil must always be provided with the name of the analytic, analytical method used. For a given method to be useful, the laboratory data must also be correlated with uh, crop production data from field experiments. Typically, the laboratory test methods uh, that gives the greatest correlation with plant growth and yields under defined conditions, soils and climate are selected. This will vary with crop type and density of planting. As a result, a wide range of analytical methods as shown in this table is used to determine uh, available phosphorus in soil throughout the world. So now uh, I'm going to turn over the floor to one of my colleagues, Mr. Virgil uh, Bernaldo, to discuss about the principles of the Olsen method. <clears throat> now, Mr. Virgil, now your the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, but we cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now yes, thanks. Okay. So uh, thank you to Mama Flor for the, her wonderful discussion on the uh, brief introduction and uh, the scope of this uh, Glossolan uh, SOP. Now for my part, I will discuss uh, the principles uh, of the Olsen uh, method extraction, and also some other important details when it comes to the uh, uh, effect of time, the size of the vessel, uh, and agitation when you do the shaking part. Also, I will discuss uh, some important uh, points uh, when you start to analyze the soil using this method. And some... Uh, review of our uh, basic chemistry. So to proceed, uh, let me uh, go uh, into my presentation. Can you go to the next slide? Okay, so let us uh, understand how P uh, is located in the soil. So as uh, you can see in our picture, in the picture presented uh, in our screen, uh, usually, P is uh, available in uh, inorganic or organic forms, which are uh, somewhat readily available for uptake uh, by the plants through the roots. But uh, usually the inorganic uh, phosphorus forms are more available for plant uptake than the organic form. Uh, inorganic phosphorus forms are, pri are primarily mixtures of uh, aluminum, and uh, iron phosphates, as you can see uh, in this uh, yellow uh, <clears throat> figure. And also it is all, it's also available in uh, calcium phosphates. 
then uh, the relative percentages between these uh, three forms in soil are a function of soil pH. With higher percentages of aluminum and iron phosphates in acid soils and higher percentages of calcium uh, phosphates in neutral to alkaline soils. That is why we qualify Olsen as a method of extracting phosphorus for alkaline soils, neutral to alkaline soils, while for the BRE1 and BRE2 uh, is a method for extracting phosphorus for uh, acidic soils. So next slide. Uh, the Olsen method uh, also uses uh, sodium uh, bicarbonate uh, extract. Uh, I think it's in the next slide. So for this one, what uh, phosphorus does the Olsen method extract from the soil? So usually the P extracted uh, by Olsen method from the soil mostly comes from, uh, as what I have said earlier, uh, mostly from P adsorbed on the surface of uh, iron and alu uh, aluminum minerals with the uh, different uh, crystalline P and on calcium uh, carbonate particles. And also from organometallic and phosphate complexes of relatively high solubility. But for this one, for the Olsen method, uh, the most uh, common uh, type of P is uh, uh, analyzed from soils uh, which have higher per percentages of uh, calcium phosphates. Next slide. Okay. So uh, why and how does Olsen's uh, extractant solu solubilize uh, phosphorus? So how do this extractant uh, get the available inorganic phosphates from the soil? So as you can see in our uh, simple uh, diagram, on the left uh, more part of uh, the figure, uh, you can see that those uh, type of uh, phosphates uh, enclosed in the rectangle are present in the soil. When we now add the sodium uh, bicarbonate in 0.5 uh, molar, the sodium uh, bicarbonate now uh, releases the ions below, as you can see, the uh, bicarbonate, the carbonate, and uh, the hydroxyl ions at pH uh, 8.5. So the solution is uh, maintained or buffered at 8.5. Later, you will uh, know the importance of uh, the the importance of having the solution buffered at 8.5. And uh, after that, when you now put the sodium bicarbonate. Um, the type of uh, phosphates present in the soil are now uh, released and readily available for analysis uh, using the UVB's uh, spectrophotometer. Later, uh, on the presentation of uh, Ms. Lyra, you will uh, visualize how it uh, happens. Okay. So usually the hydroxide, and uh, can you go back first? Okay. So usually the hydroxide and carbonate ions in the sodium bicarbonate uh, solution controls the activity of the calcium, sure. aluminum, and iron in the soil by precipitation of uh, calcium as carbonate and uh, aluminum and iron as hydroxides. As a result, the, the phosphate concentration uh, can, so, can also uh, increase. Next slide, please. So uh, there are numerous uh, factors that can uh, affect uh, the analysis of phosphorus. So there are four, extraction uh, solution, extraction time, vessel size, and type of uh, agitation. Also extraction temperature. And, uh, and also spectrophotometric uh, measurement. So it is important to note that uh, let us be careful when we analyze the soil using this method because there are numerous uh, factors that may affect the uh, analysis. So let's go to the first uh, factor that may affect or during the analysis. Okay. So the effect of uh, extraction solution or meaning uh, the pH of the extracting uh, solution. As you can see in our table, table one, 
uh, this table comes from uh, the book by Diller, 2002. Influence of pH on bicarbonate extractable uh, phosphate. So as you can see in the first uh, right uh, first row, uh, we maintain the 0.5 normal, or it is also equivalent to molar, letter M, uh, sodium bicarbonate. So as we prepare that 0.5 molar or normal sodium bicarbonate solution, uh, we intend to maintain the pH only to 8.5 plus or minus 0.05. So meaning 8.55 will do, 8.54. Also, we can also uh, reach, for example, 8.48 up to 8.45. So we should uh, take note of the deviations when it comes to when it comes to the pH of the solution because uh, in this table you can see the table shows that uh, the pH was um, the, the the researcher tried to determine the factor uh, of having high pH of the uh, Extracting solution. So you will see 8.5, 8.75, and uh, pH 9. Uh, you can see that there is a significant increase in pH. So if you uh, have a solution that is uh, more than 8.5 plus or minus 0 .05, 0 0.05, automatically you will be, it's either you will be uh, positively or negatively biased meaning you will uh, extract more phosphorus or you will not uh, extract uh, the phosphorus that <clears throat> this method uh, provides. Okay, so let's go to the next factor. So we have the effect of time, vessel size, and uh, type of agitation. Okay, so commonly, uh, this method uh, allows for 30 minutes of uh, agitation or shaking uh, period. By study, uh, if you, for example, uh, forgot to turn off the shaking the shaker, or if you did not uh, consider the timer, if you shake the samples for around uh, plus five to six minutes, there is no significant uh, increase in the phosphorus that you will uh, extract. But uh, if you extracted it far more than 30 minutes, let's, uh, let's say this one, 40 minutes, uh, the increase in shaking time also increases the amount of phosphorus by 5%. So it is, uh, how to call this, uh, directly proportional. Another factor is the vessel, the vessel size. So it is critical that the extraction vessel contain a minimum of 25% dead space occupied by air to provide sufficient agitation while uh, you are shaking the samples. Next is, uh, it is also recommended that the recipro uh, reciprocating shaker be used for the uh, extraction to allow proper uh, contact of soil and the solution while it is uh, shaking in the shaker. Other laboratories, I think they also use a, uh, what you call this type, the orbital shaker. But uh, for this method, we recommend the use of a reciprocated uh, shaker. Now we go to the effect of uh, extraction uh, temperature. So by inspection, you will see that uh, when you look at the, uh, uh, the x-axis, which is uh, the temperature, and the y-axis, which is the, the concentration of the extracted phosphorus, you will see that there is a direct uh, proportional. When you increase the temperature of the environment or the solution where you are shaking the samples, automatically you will have greater amount of phosphorus that will be extracted by this uh, method. So it is important that you maintain uh, the temperature of the room uh, to around 20 to 22 degrees Celsius or 20 to 25 degrees Celsius at ambient or normal uh, room temperature to avoid uh, over-extracting the, phos the phosphorus content of the soil. 
Next slide. Another is the spectrophotometric uh, measurement. As you can see in this uh, figure, also by uh, Miller 2002, uh, you will see that there is uh, influence in the spectrophotometric wavelength on uh, phosphate key content. You will see that uh, there is a comparison between 660 nanometers and 882 nanometers. So this uh, method only uses 882 nanometers because uh, by study, it is found that 882 uh, nanometers wavelength is superior and does not have a soil soluble organic interference that is noted for the 660 nanometers wavelength. Because originally, the method for Olsen was developed for 660 nanometers. But eventually, uh, the researchers found out that 882 nanometers is a better option uh, for this uh, method. And also, using 882 nanometers will also prevent you from high bias of uh, phosphorus when you are measuring. Next slide. Now I will go through the measurement or quantification, which is uh, part two of the brief introduction to the UVB spectroscopy, because this method uh, uses uh, that technology, measuring uh, the P content. Next slide. Okay. So this is a uh, short review of our basic uh, chemistry. So uh, usually, uh, electromagnetic radiation is a form of uh, energy, and it can be described in both waves and uh, particles. Uh, the interaction of electromagnetic radiation, which is in this case, uh, case is light, uh, with matter is what we call the, the spectroscopy. So there are regions of uh, the electromagnetic uh, spectrum. And in this uh, analysis, we will be dealing with the UV region only with a wavelength of uh, 882 nanometers. So as you can see, 882 nanometers is uh, on the rightmost part of this uh, figure, around the red, uh, uh, red color. But... Uh, as we studied in our chemistry, usually what is the what you what can you what you can see as a is as the color of the solution, which is in this case is color blue. Uh, the detected uh, call this wavelength is the complementary of that one. So it is on the actually on the red part of this uh, color scheme. Next slide. So what are the processes that occur when we, the electromagnetic radiation or uh, spec, uh, the EMR affects the matter? So in the figure, uh, usually in uh, spectroscopy, the light uh, energy interacts in different ways with matter through first absorption, emission, deflection, transmission, scattering, or refraction. So each interaction can uh, disclose certain properties of matter and different type of information uh, about the matter can be obtained. And the uh, magnitude of those light radiations absorbed or emitted by matter are measured with the help of instruments like spectrophotometer. So in this case, uh, the, the principle is uh, absorption. Okay, so for this one, it's just a uh, uh, figure or application of the uh, beer lamberts law, wherein uh, you will see that in this method, uh, we measure the, uh, the transmittance or the amount of light transmitted through a sample by uh, rationing the intensity of the incident light to the intensity of the transmitted light. So absorbance, uh, usually me absorbance measurements are frequently used to quantify an unknown sample's concentration by exploiting the beer lamberts uh, law. That describes how light is attenuated based on the materials it uh, passes through. 
Next slide. Okay, so this is the basic structure of a uh, spectrophotometer. So it is uh, relatively uh, straightforward. First, uh, there is a uh, light source and a wavelength uh, dispersive element. Third, uh, there will be a uh, detector. Uh, I mean, fourth, there will be a detector because uh, the, the light passes through first here in the number uh, three, which is the sample solution. Then there is the detector. And last would be uh, the digital display or the meter. So basically, we just uh, measure the amount of light that is that passes through the solution because the solution containing the uh, complexes already absorb part of the light that uh, that is coming from the light source. So it is very uh, we call this a straightforward explanation. Next slide. Okay, so chemical reactions in the colorimetry of uh, phosphorus. So the measurement or determination of phosphorus with spectroscopic methods uh, is based on uh, color development. In the coloration process, the uh, molybdenum blue methods are the most uh, sensitive. And as a result, they are widely used for soil extracts containing small amount uh, of phosphate as well as for total P determination source. These methods are based on uh, the principle that in acid molybdate solution containing orthophosphate ions, the phosphomolybdate complex is formed, which can be reduced by ascorbic or other reducing agents, which uh, is, for, exam for example, stannous chloride. In the presence of uh, potassium antimony tartrate, to form a blue colored uh, complex. So the, by, the, the, the product of this uh, uh, analysis is a blue colored uh, complex, which is, uh, will be uh, measured uh, using the UVB's uh, spectro, spectrophotometer. Next slide. Okay, so there are some cautions in uh, measurement. So when we now, uh, when measure the phosphorus extracted, you should take note that the correlation coefficient between the concentration uh, of the standards and the absorbance of the colored solution uh, on the calibration curve should be greater, greater than or equal to 0 0.995. And uh, if the absorbance uh, of the samples is greater than that of the peak of the curve, or the highest uh, standard, you just uh, dilute the extract with the extract, uh, extractant solution and record the dilution factor. Then uh, you can take a new alico and uh, repeat the operation. Next is uh, you should verify the preparation of the, uh, the agent standards and the instrument uh, configuration and operation if it is uh, correct because it may also take part uh, in the random bias during random errors during the analysis. Next is in PO send, there are frequent uh, contaminations that may arise or detected by a slight coloration of the blank. Uh, you should uh, take special care in washing uh, the glasswares. If you can purchase, uh, what you call this, phosphate free. Uh, Detergents, it is uh, much better to avoid uh, contamination of your uh, blank solution. Next, next slide. Okay, so next is uh, there are some cases that there will be uh, some interferences in the uh, color of the solution because of the organic uh, matter. So sometimes uh, there are solutions that are dark, uh, dark blue, or you cannot uh, really classify or qualify if it is a color blue because uh, the organic matter has an uh, effect on it. So what uh, you can do is that uh, you can uh, put activated carbon uh, in the soil when you shake it 
and you can also filter the uh, solution so you can have a clearer uh, blue color solution when you now put the mixed uh, reagents next so there are also interferences in uh, due to the ion uh, solution so the antimony and potassium tartrate form uh, usually the colored uh, heteropolymolybdic complex or the molybdate blue color. So the antimony accelerates the development of the blue color and usually it stabilizes it for 24 hours. And, and there is no interference as uh, expected from uh, silicon. Also, the final pH of the colored solution uh, remains within the plateau of maximum stability of the complex. The final acidity of the solution contributes also to the to the precipitation of, of sus, uh, suspended uh, material. All right. So for the next part of our presentation, I will uh, turn over the floor to Ms. Lyra Expectation. Thank you for everyone for listening. Okay. Thank you, Sir Virgil, for the kind introduction. Again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. And thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, I at this moment, I will be presenting the step-by-step -step procedure for the determination of the available phosphorus using the Olsen's method. So let, let me start my discussion with the uh, presentation of the equipment and laboratory wares that we need to prepare before the analysis. So here are the list of uh, equipment and laboratory wares for P. Olsen analysis. So for the laboratory wares, we have Erlen Mayer flask, uh, uh, 125 ml, funnel for the uh, filtration process, beakers for the preparation of our reagents, polyethylene bottles with lead wide mouth type 125 ml capacity, as mentioned earlier by uh, Sir Virgil, and then volumetric flasks for the preparation of our uh, solutions and working standards, and graduated cylinder, test tubes, micropipette, and volumetric pipettes. For the equipment, uh, we should have a UV-vis spectrophotometer that we will be using for the quantification of the extracted uh, phosphate in, the, in our soil sample. And then analytical balance uh, with a precision of at least 0 0.001 gram. And the reciprocating shaker and vortex mixer. For the reagents and required chemical solutions, here are the list of reagents and chemical solutions that must be uh, prepared before the analysis of Olsen method. So all of these chemicals and reagents must be of at least analytical grade. So first, uh, we have the extracting solution. So this extracting solution, as mentioned earlier, is the sodium bicarbonate solution with a concentration of 0.5 molar adjusted to pH 8.5 uh, using the one molar sodium hydroxide. Another reagent is the mixed reagent. So the mixed reagent uh, composed of 200 ml deionized water, 50 ml of 4 molar sulfuric acid, 15 ml of 4% ammonium molybdate solution, and 30 ml of 1.75% ascorbic acid solution, as well as 5 ml of the 0.0275 potassium antimony tartrate solution. So the mixed reagent must be prepared fresh daily as the uh, ascorbic acid solution is not stable and will degrade over time. So uh, next is the deionized water uh, that we will be using for the preparation of these uh, reagents. The phosphate-free activated charcoal and, the, and our working standard series. So for the preparation of standard solution, uh, we first have to prepare a 100 ppm standard uh, phosphate solution. So we can do this by using an NIST traceab traceable 1000 ppm of the phosphorus stock solution. 
So uh, alternatively, we can also use the potassium dihydrogen phosphate dried for two hours at 110 degrees Celsius. Next is the preparation of the 4 ppm secondary standard phosphate solution. So uh, to prepare this, uh, we should pipe it uh, for, for example, we prepare 100, uh, 250 ml volumetric uh, flask for the secondary phosphate uh, solution. We can pipe at 10 ml of the 100 ppm uh, standard solution and then uh, make it up to volume with the extracting solution. So lastly is the preparation of our working phosphate standard series. So in a 100 volumetric flask, uh, we will pipe at 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 ml of the 4 ppm secondary standard phosphate uh, solution and make it up to final volume with the use of our extracting solution. Then our uh, working standard series will have a 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2, 1.6, and 2 ppm. So uh, please also note that uh, the range of the standard series or our working phosphate standards can be adjusted according to the equipment specification and the expected concentration of uh, phosphorus in the analyzed soil samples. So for the caution in the preparation of reagents, since uh, almost every lab uses the chemicals, and in this case, we use uh, many chemicals for the analysis of Olsen method. So chemical safety rules are amassed. And following these policies helps, uh, helps us to avoid spills and other accidents, as well as to damage uh, the environment outside of the laboratory. So here are the list of the caution and safety rules that we must follow while working in the laboratory, especially uh, when we are conducting this analysis. Since uh, the Olsen P procedure involves the use of hazardous chemicals, we should always refer to the safety guidelines or the safety data sheet before proceeding with the analysis. And we should always wear uh, PPE. So what is PPE? PPE is or the proper personal protective equipment includes the use of a laboratory coat, closed shoes, uh, gas or dust mask and appropriate gloves, as well as safety glasses when we are performing chemical analysis to mitigate the harmful effects of chemical exposure. Next is to observe uh, careful and proper handling of chemicals when using strong alkali bases, such as in this case, we use uh, sodium hydroxide and strong acids uh, for example, the uh, sulfuric acid that uh, we use for the preparation of the mixed reagent and oxidizing agents. And to avoid mixing incompatible chemicals to reduce uh, risks of fire and explosion inside the laboratory. And of course, always pour the acid into water to avoid splattering. So, as mentioned earlier, uh, we should always refer to the safety data sheet of the chemicals uh, that we will be using in this analysis before proceeding. So here is the summarized uh, information on the chemicals, uh, chemical hazards from the safety data sheet uh, of the chemicals that we should be aware of. So first is the sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid is a clear, colorless, odorless liquid and it is extremely corrosive and causes uh, severe, severe burns if not handled properly. So we should always dilute it by adding a small portion of acid to a large amount of water. And of course, we should always work under a fume, fume hood to avoid inhaling its vapors. Next is the ammonium molybdate solution, which is also a corrosive liquid and contact with, uh, of the solution with uh, the eyes or, uh, or the body may cause serious health injuries. And the reaction with metals produces hydrogen and in a fire produces uh, sulfur oxides. 
So um, as we all know, sulfur oxides are pollutants that contribute to the formation of acid rains as well as particulate uh, pollution. And they are harmful to our lungs and it makes us difficult to breathe. Uh, another caution in the preparation of reagents, uh, for the ascorbic acid, it has no known effect on the skin or body, and it should be stored in light-resistant containers because it is light-sensitive, and we should always keep it away from incompatible materials, such as uh, oxidizing agents. For the potassium antimony tartrate, uh, it is hazardous in case of contact with our skin or body, and we should not dispose it down the drain. And it is also incompatible with strong acids, uh, bases, and oxidizing agents. For the activated charcoal, it is also hazardous in case of contact with skin or body and may cause eye and respiratory irritation if inhaled. So we should always keep it away from heat, sparks, open flames, and hot surfaces. So for the sample preparation, for the preparation of our soil samples, it must be air dry or dried in, a, in an air force uh, oven with a temperature of 35 plus minus uh, five degrees Celsius and then grind and sieve to less than or equal to 2.0 millimeter uh, size. So we will now proceed uh, with the step-by-step -step procedure for the analysis of this uh, olsen P method. So the olsen P analytical procedure is divided into two parts. First is the extraction process, wherein, uh, the, as mentioned earlier, uh, the carbon dioxide from the bicarbonate is driven off and the pH increases uh, and the bicarbonate will then be converted to carbonate. So the calcium, magnesium, aluminum, and iron in the soil, uh, uh, the, the activity of these, uh, of these ions are reduced as the calcium, magnesium, and aluminum hydroxides uh, are formed and uh, increasing the quantity of the phosphates in the extracted solution. Second is the quantification or the measurement of the extracted phosphates uh, through the use of the UV-Vis uh, spectrophotometer, which was explained also earlier uh, by Mr. Virgil. So for the extraction process, uh, the first uh, part of the procedure is to weigh five grams of the air-dried soil sample into a wide mouth 125 ml uh, capacity shaking bottle. So we then should include, uh, this includes two blanks and three quality control materials or other check samples in your laboratory. Next is the addition of the 100 ml sodium bicarbonate solution, which was adjusted at pH 8.5. And then the addition also of the half teaspoon uh, phosphate-free activated charcoal. After that, we can mechanically shake it for 30 minutes uh, for a mechanical shaker set at ranging from 180 to 200 oscillations per minute. And the shaking bottles must be placed horizontally to provide the sufficient uh, agitation or mixing of the soil and our solution. After that, uh, we can filter it through a filter paper, uh, Watma number 42, or with an equivalent acid-treated identical porosity uh, filter paper. The second part of the analysis of Olsen P is the spectrometric measurement or the quantification of the extracted uh, phosphorus. So for this process, we should pipette 3 ml of the 
blanks, profusy ends, and the sample extracts into test tubes. After that, we can slowly add the mixed reagents uh, by pipetting, uh, by pipette, and homogenize it using the vortex mixer. Then we can allow the solution to stand for at least uh, one hour for the blue color to develop at its maximum. For the colorimet colorimetric determination of phosphorus, uh, we can read uh, the after the uh, standing time of the soil uh, of the extracted tea and the mixed reagent. Uh, we can then read the absorbance of the calibration standards, the blanks and the QCNs in the samples in a spectrophotometer set at 882 nanometer wavelength. So if the absorbance of the samples is too high, as mentioned earlier, we can dilute the extract with the extracting solution and record the dilution factor. So uh, the acceptance criteria for the correlation coefficient of the calibration curve must be uh, greater than or equals to 0 0.995 to proceed with the analysis of the samples. So otherwise, uh, we should verify that the standards and the agents have been uh, correctly prepared and that the instrument is uh, functioning properly or the instrument setup is correct. So following the beer lamberts law, uh, the amount of light absorbed will be then directly proportional to the concentration of our sample. So for the calculations of the results of the analysis, here's how we can calculate the result of the analysis uh, by following this equation. So the uh, result is reported in uh, mg per kilogram T and the, uh, and the calculation is by uh, A uh, minus B where in A is the concentration in the extracted sample and B is the concentration in the target. Uh, multiply with the volume of the extracting solution, which is in this case, uh, we use 100 ml of the extracting solution. And if we have a dilution factor, uh, multiply again with the moisture correction factor over the weight of the sample, which is five grams. So uh, the concentration, as mentioned earlier, the concentration of the phosphorus will be in mg per kilogram T, and it should be reported in an oven dry basis, uh, in an oven dry basis with two de uh, decimal places. For the quality assurance or quality control procedure uh, that we should implement for the analysis of the Olsen P method, uh, here, uh, for the accuracy test, uh, we can participate in an interlaboratory proficiency test at least once a year. And uh, the evaluation is that uh, the PD score must be less than two, or it should be within the acceptable criteria of the PP provider. If not, uh, we should identify the possible causes and perform corrections and develop corrective actions to solve the problem if we have a failed PP. And the records must be, records of the actions taken must be uh, kept. We can also perform a uh, replicate analysis of the certified reference material or other quality reference material that you have in your laboratory and compare the results with those of other laboratories as indicated in the certificate of analysis of the uh, CRM, which in this case, uh, uh, the acceptance criteria, it, the result of your analysis must be within the 95% confidence interval or the target value as indicated in the certificate of analysis of the CRM. For the precision test, we can perform a replicate analysis of 10% of the samples in a test batch. Uh, for example, we have a 50 samples in a batch. Uh, 
uh, every 10 samples, we can perform a replicate analysis of the 10th sample. So the evaluation of the replicate of analysis is that we calculate the percent uh, relative standard deviation to determine if the precision of the replicate analysis is within the specifications and compare the result with the target precision for the analyte concentration as given in the AOAC table for the expected uh, uh, precision. So here is the expected accuracy or repeatability as a function of analyte concentration given by AOAC. So for example, uh, we have a result of 10 ppm for the, of our soil sample and the calculated uh, RSD for the replicate analysis is two. Then uh, we can say that those replicate samples are precise since uh, it is within the acceptance criteria of this table that is the 7.3. Another uh, quality control procedure that we can implement is the uh, use of the control chart. So the control chart uh, is uh, another tool to monitor the trend of, uh, daily, of our daily analysis. So we can analyze at least a triplicate of the quality control materials uh, external or internal per batch, and then construct the control chart with the, with the results and monitor the control chart for out of specified uh, limits. So if there are out of specified limit observed in the control chart, uh, we should also take action of it and identify the possible causes, uh, perform corrections or develop corrective action plan to solve the problem. Here are the references of this uh, method. And that is all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Uh, but I, uh, I would like also to thank uh, Dr. J.D. Echeverse and Dr. He uh, Claudia Hidalgo Merayano from Mexico. Uh, as this uh, presentation material uh, was adapted from their presentation during the uh, Spanish online training session of the Olsen team method. So if you have any comments, uh, questions or suggestions, uh, you may let us know through the comment section or you can raise your hand. Uh, again, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, thank you very much. To all colleagues from the Philippines, from the Bureau, uh, thanks a, a lot for the nice presentation and for the clear overview of all the steps. Uh, thanks for giving instruction on all the aspects of the measurements, so including quality assurance and quality control and all the measurements. Um, I see there are lots of questions in the chat, actually. Um, I will try to start from the first one I, I read. Um, some of them, uh, the first one I see is from 1025. It's from Dr. Sajid Hussain asking, uh, what are the possible storage conditions for pH sustaining um, pH 8.5 uh, extracting solution? Uh, I don't know if Virgil or other colleagues would like to answer on this. Hello, uh, good, uh, good afternoon or good evening. Uh, I already uh, answered uh, okay. Dr. Sajid Hussain, uh, Hussain's uh, question in the chat box. So usually the storage uh, uh, of the extracting uh, solution can be placed uh, in number of bottles. And uh, it is uh, preferable to prepare the extracting uh, solution fresh or before the analysis. Uh, you can also prepare it in advance provided that you check the pH of the solution as it tends to increase over time. So if you see that the pH became uh, nine uh, over time, just adjust it uh, manually. Uh, to 8.5 again using diluted solution of hydrogen uh, chloride. Okay, so you just said, uh, now I'm reading the tools already. I just noticed that you really already answered. Sorry. I see the tools to answer the other question from uh, Fadwa Iladev. I received a private message from um, 
John Abbe and Solisa asking, uh, um, I can now give to you this question. Is the question is, in analyzing soil for available phosphorus, is it necessary to analyze the soil using the methods Bray-1 and not SEN method, despite of uh, the pH, given the fact that old SEN can also be useful in analyzing soil with uh, acidic pH, slightly acidic and alkaline? So I think the question is uh, how we can relate the methodologies. And I mean, we know that uh, as we also showed, we are concerning about the pH for these measurements. So if you have, can come, come back to this point. So stressing again, how, which method to choose uh, according to the pH, or if there is any advantage or disadvantage for each method. Okay, uh, let me answer uh, this question. For uh, the information also of uh, everyone, uh, usually, uh, what we do in our uh, laboratory when we started uh, also to apply the glossal and uh, SOP for, for Olsen, uh, we qualify our soil samples, which is uh, acidic and uh, which is uh, alkaline soils. So we, we, we set a uh, pH uh, limit to our soils. We analyze our soils uh, using the Olsen method, if we determine that the pH uh, of the soil is 5.6 and above, and we, we also analyze our soil samples using the Bray-1 method, when we determine that the samples or the soil samples are 5.5 uh, and below. But uh, you can also do trials in your laboratory. You can uh, compare uh, your uh, results if uh, there are significant uh, differences. But in our case, we, we use that uh, uh, limits to, to, to qualify which method are we going to use in our soil samples. Now, in the case of the true method, we don't uh, usually recommend it because it does not uh, uh, qualify uh, the type of uh, soil that it is, uh, that it is uh, applicable. Uh, there you will you might encounter over extracting or under extracting the available uh, P solution. So it is better to, to, to check first what uh, is the pH of your soil and now you qualify if you will use the Olsen if it is 5.6 and above and the Bray or the Bray wide if it is 5.5 uh, and below. Usually there are uh, just uh, minor uh, differences in the results. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Nai. Thanks a lot for the coming back to this point. I see there are some questions now from like, the one from Portugal. I don't know if you already answered this. Um, they ask, they're asking, uh, we haven't to confirm the pH of extractors before the second point quantification, or should we? I know uh, if uh, colleagues from Portugal want to address this question to uh, one particular speaker, or if some anyone from the, the bureau, the BUSWM, want to answer to this one. Uh, can we ask what uh, timestamp it is so we can uh, locate it in the chat box? Yeah, maybe colleagues from Portugal, you can take the floor also if you want to better explain your, your question. Or to, or to specify to who you would like to, uh, to address this one. In the meantime, uh, there is another one of, uh, I see from, uh, sorry. Um, okay, uh, Ma Kiwe asking, uh, okay, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I would like to know how to analyze nitrate nitrogen from such samples. But actually, uh, I think this uh, regards another procedures and we will um, provide uh, another training, another online training on nitrogen measurement in separate session. Let's just focus on available phosphorus today. Um, Luis Titschal asking, what is your view on the annual exchange raising method? Um, is a universal method for both acid and alkaline salts compared to Watson and Bray. I don't know if you, Bergil, or your colleagues have experience with this method, that is the raising method. Or maybe Luis Pichal, can you explain it to us so we can share this? 
Isn't it about the region? Or do you, Virgil, know this one? Um, uh, uh, Miss Lyra would like uh, to answer the question from uh, Portugal, our colleagues okay. from Portugal. Okay, let's start with that. Uh, I think the question is uh, we haven't confirmed uh, the pH of extractors before the second point, or would you like to uh, uh, clarify it a little bit, Lyra? I think they're asking if uh, they should uh, adjust first the pH of the extractant before measuring it. Okay, Lyra? Yes, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, we should adjust first the uh, pH of the extracting solution before the analysis. Since uh, the first part of the analysis is that we add the 100 ml extracting solution before the quantification of the extracted phosphate. So yes, uh, the pH of the extracting solution must be uh, adjusted first uh, before the quantification. Thank you, uh, Lyra. I think uh, I also answered uh, some of the questions in the chat box. Uh, you can uh, go back to it after uh, this is meeting. I believe that uh, Filippo will be uh, giving out uh, the record of this meeting or will be posted at the FAO website. Are there uh, other uh, further questions or clarifications? Sorry, I got some problems. Uh, thanks, thanks uh, for the clarification. I don't know, Virgil, if you already answered to the other question from about the racing one. Otherwise, we can ask uh, the colleagues from uh, Mr. Luis to um, explain it better. I don't know if uh, you colleagues from the from the Philippines are familiar with this racing methodology. Yeah, Luis, I see you have the hands up. Do you want to take the floor? Yes. Um, yeah, thanks. FMK uses the resin phosphate method across all soil types. Um, so alkaline and acid, because we, you, you're extracting basically at the, the, the native pH of the soil. Um, so some have argued that that's a better option than trying to use a bray for acid and also for alkaline. Um, but it's obviously a very tedious method. It's got a long extraction time and there's many steps to it. And so, on. so I was just interested to know if, if uh, your colleagues have had any experiences. I know Brazil is quite popular for, for some of the agricultural work, um, but, but not so much in other parts of the world. Though. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for sharing this, uh, this input. Brigil uh, or other colleagues from the Philippines, you have, are you familiar with this methodology? Um, uh, I don't, uh, I, I, uh, what do you call this? Is uh, it uh, being referred to the method using high performance uh, liquid uh, chromatography? Uh, if it is, is, if it is, it is a, uh, what do you call this, expensive uh, type uh, of analysis because uh, we use uh, expensive uh, kind of, uh, of equipment and also very tedious uh, process. Uh, but if we just uh, would like uh, to measure the only the P content of soil, we can opt uh, in using uh, uh, Olsen in Bay one method using UVB spectro spectroscopy. Okay. Thanks. Um... There is a question from Toby, uh, Toby Moriake, asking um, what is the recommended temperature for the extraction solution? Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Toby, for this question. For the temper uh, temperature of the extracting solution, it must also be the same with the temperature of the 
uh, working working temperature. So as in this case, since it is recommended to have a temperature of uh, 22 plus minus two degrees Celsius for the working temp for the uh, extraction process of the Olsen method. So uh, I guess the uh, temperature of the extracting solution must also be within that range. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the for the clarification. Mm, I would like to check if there are other questions from the chat. I don't know if I missed someone. Uh, yeah, let me clarify once again that the presentation will be uploaded online and together with the video recording of this session. So you can, uh, let's say, consult this material once again. We'll upload this in maybe next week. Um, and we will try to, say, to send certificates to participants in the upcoming weeks. We're a little bit delayed with that, but we will do our best to send you the certificates as soon as possible. Uh, let me think if there, let me see if there is any, any more um, uh, questions. Please, if you want to share your questions, feel free to raise your hand and you can take the floor. Uh, mute your microphone so you can take the floor if you want. I think all previous questions were being answered. Let me check if someone is waiting more. Um, Nur Azarina Abu Bakar is asking if uh, there is any difference from Bray and Kurtz method. Mm, do you know this methodology, uh, colleagues? Uh, for the question of uh, Nur uh, Abu Bakar, uh, this uh, method that we discussed is the, for the Olsen P method, which uh, analyzes for alkaline soils, while the Bray and Kurtz uh, method uh, you mentioned is uh, actually the Bray uh, 1 method. So the Bray and Kurtz uh, are the one, who, Bray and Kurtz are the one who develop uh, the method. So the Bray and Kurtz method are referred as uh, Bray 1 method is a uh, Estimate is a uh, test method for estimating phosphorus in acidic soils. So that's the difference between uh, the two type of uh, methods. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, there is another question from Ishan asking if in is it mandatory to dilute sample with extracting solution or uh, if laboratories can dilute it with water in case of high absorbance. Uh, for this case, uh, we recommend that the, you dilute it with the extracting solution so that the uh, matrix of the, uh, the working standards and your samples are the same uh, when you uh, read it in the UVVS spectral photometer. Yeah, thanks for the, for the clarification. Uh, is there any more questions? from You can both write it in the chat or um, raise your hand. You can take the floor. Uh, please take advantage of, of this uh, chance, this occasion you have. I highly encourage you to take the floor because you can share your experience with other colleagues or uh, raise your questions to the experts that we're presenting today. So I think it's a unique uh, possibility, this one. So please feel free to take the floor. Is there any more question? Once again, um, if you feel like uh, contacting the trainers after the, the session, um, they wrote their email address in the presentation. Maybe uh, colleagues from Philippines, you can write in the chat as well your email address. So those participants who would like to um, contact you for any further clarification, they may uh, contact you directly. In the meantime, maybe let me um, show you uh, once again, uh, there's no website while we are waiting for the 
last questions. Uh, let me share my screen. I will uh, share with you, you see, this is the Glutenum website, the Global Soil Laboratory Network webpage. Here you have a clear overview of all our activities. So um, some even job opportunities are here. You can see all the increasing uh, number of laboratories where the laboratories of Glutenum are displayed in the map. You can even contact them. Um, information of our meeting and some key documents here such even the global soil laboratory assessment providing nice overview of the needs of laboratory worldwide uh, here on the left side of the menu you have a um, left part of the screen you have a menu on our main areas of work so you, if you click on soil analysis for instance you see um, will be addressed to the web page where uh, all our activities concerning soil analysis are reported so you can consult uh, the standard operating procedures were harmonized, our activity on soil and quality assurance and quality control, on health and safety and dry chemistry, so soil spectroscopy. For instance, if you go on the standard operating procedures webpage, uh, if you go down here, you click on soil chemical analysis and you click on phosphorus, then here you can find all the SOPs that Glucin and Harmonize, all labs harmonize globally these SOPs. Last year, so you can click in this case on old send method, and here you find the PDF, PDF file with all the procedure that was presented today. So all the information about the preparation, the apparatus needed, the material, uh, health and safety, and um, sample preparation measures, the procedures, and the calculations and the reference, even the quality assurance and quality control section. And this, you can do it for Bray 1, Bray 2, Manage, and all other um, SOPs that we harmonize. Um, if you go on quality assurance and quality control, for instance, you find all our material, so some guidelines to prepare internal quality control samples on how to prepare samples for proficiency testing. If you click here on the capacity development webpage, you will find the information on all the trainings we are currently organizing. So if you click on wet chemistry part, you will see all the details of the training implemented by Glossman. So if you scroll down, you will reach the today's session. So webinar on the implementation on, on the determination on soil phosphorus by old cell methodology. You will see an overview of the trainers that were presenting today. Uh, and then here we will upload soon the presentation and the video recording of today's session. So in the upcoming week, we'll, uh, we will upload here all the information, all the material of today's webinar. As you can see in the old, in the previous sessions, we already have all this information here. And I would like to take the advantage, of, uh, take the opportunity to show you the upcoming uh, webinar. So as mentioned already, there will be one webinar on handling and preparation of soil samples for chemical and physical analysis. So sample pretreatment, basically, that will be held on 6th of December in English and on 7th December in French. And then there will be a webinar on soil electrical conductivity done by some colleagues from Philippines and from uh, Syria, while this one will be done by colleagues from Afrilab. Uh, and then another webinar on internal quality control will be organized soon. So really, please have a look to this webpage because you can uh, attend other meetings, other webinars, of course, all for free. So I highly encourage you to have a look at this webinar, at this webpage. Mm, I see Bergil continue answering the chat. So thank you a lot to, for taking care of that. Uh, is there any more question coming from the chat or from the floor? Please let me know. Let me thank once again all the colleagues from the Philippines who joined this webinar. So uh, Bergil, uh, Dr. Gina, um, Lira, and Florfina for your nice participation and an active uh, uh, participation, of course, in answering all the questions. Mm, there is a question in the chat right now. Sometimes I receive results for the Olsen, uh, phosphorus Olsen available or phosphorus Olsen modified. What is the difference in case, yeah, if, this, if the difference exists? Could you please answer this question from Jose Ramon Cuesta? So if there is a difference between um, soil available phosphorus and soil phosphorus, uh, let's say, modified. Uh, to answer the question of Mr. Jose Rabon, 
So for the modified authenticity method, uh, I guess you uh, you are talking about the uh, since the authenticity available method is the standard method. Uh, when we say authenticity modified method, then I guess uh, there has been a uh, modification in the uh, analysis of authenticity from the standard method. So yes, they are different because in the modified method uh, there is a modification in the analysis. So uh, if the modified method, yeah, uh, but I guess it also undergoes a uh, method uh, valid validation uh, procedure. Thanks. Thank you, Lira. Uh, I hope Jose did answer your question. Um, is there any more question from participants? Please feel free to write your question in the chat or you can even uh, raise your hand and take the floor here in the, in the meeting. You can ask your question directly to the, the trainers. Well, if there is no more question, uh, let me thank once again all the trainers. Mm, really, thank you for your availability. Let me stress, I really like to stress this point every time we have these webinars. I really think that where, when uh, experts and soil laboratory staff members are ready to share their experience uh, with, um, with other colleagues, uh, is it, and really, this is where uh, Glossolar Network um, is successful. I mean, uh, I really like, and I really think this is really a good story, a successful story, uh, and a success for all members of the network. So meaning that experts meet, they share the, the experience the, to, on, on the methodology they adopt in the lab, because again, the, our purpose is to ensure that all soil laboratories reach the same level and by collaborating, by collaboration and mutual support, because we would like to um, laboratories to produce uh, reliable, interpretable and comparable data, because these are the basis to produce maps. These are the basis to make decisions for policy makers. So really soil laboratories are playing a crucial role especially today where uh, soil is really um, uh, is giving like finally governments are giving more and more importance to soil, soil science and management. So uh, please be aware that your job as uh, soil staff members is really crucial in this perspective. So um, thanks again for that. And um, yeah, thanks a lot for the trainers. I don't know if you want to have some closing remarks. Before closing the sessions, I would like to uh, invite you all to the World Soil Day celebration that will be, um, uh, there are many events online organized, but the one uh, taking place here at FAO at Quartency Room will be on Friday at 12.30 uh, room time. I will now give you uh, the link in the chat to register. So please uh, register and, and join the, the webinar, the, I mean, the, the session for the World Soil Day. That will be one hour um, long and many key speakers will take the floor and, and we will also have the chance to talk a little bit about soil laboratories as we will have the chance to present the global assessment that was released and published in 2021. So uh, I will now put the link in the chat to register to the World Soil Day and let me give the floor to the colleagues of Philippines to close the sessions and to for five final remarks and thanks a lot again to all of you for your participations and especially to the trainers for their kind of availability. We cannot hear you, Dina. Uh, I think you're mute. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much, Sir Filippo. And again, as always, and we thank the Food and Agriculture Organization for this privilege and indeed an opportunity to share with you all the standard test methods that we also do in our own laboratory. 
being the National Reference Laboratory of the FAO and the lead convenor of the Philippine National Soil Laboratory Network. I would like to share that in the case of the Philippines, there are 43 members of the Philippine National Soil Laboratory Network. And I would like to share this as an encouragement to all other laboratories that indeed the harmonization of test methods is something that uh, will be very useful to all of us. And in the Philippines, as we are implementing the National Soil Health Program, it gives us the opportunity that all laboratories um, will be capacitated even through this training and that they share with us the responsibility to analyze voluminous data that are being generated all over the country and that all this data can be exchanged. So if that is happening within the Philippines, I would like to encourage all other members of the Global Soil Laboratory Network that uh, we join hands, we unite with FAO in our efforts to harmonize test methods. So indeed, uh, we are grateful, we are thankful to FAO for giving us this platform to be able to share our methods. And for this evening, morning or afternoon in your case, I would like to especially thank our presenters and my blessing at the Laboratory Services Division. They are all very capable. Our Chief of Soil Chemistry Section, Ms. Florfina Sanchez. Thank you, Flor. And Mr. Berhil Bernaldo, the co-author for this uh, phosphorus method using Olsen. And may I request Lyra, back up. maybe you would like to show your beautiful face. I have very young, energetic, active people at our laboratory. That's one encouragement. Miss Lyra Expectation. So to all of you who stayed with us up to this time, who actively participated in the Q&A, indeed we are very uh, encouraged because of this interest that you have shown to this training. So keep on participating. We still have upcoming trainings. We will not get tired supporting this kind of activity. It is for all of us. Always our pleasure to serve. Maraming salamat po. God bless us all. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, everyone. So have a nice day, evening, or afternoon, depending where you are. And thanks again for your participation. See you to the next uh, training session of Brussels. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.